Weirdos, welcome back to another episode of History for Weirdos. Hi! <laughs> We're so glad to be back. So we took yes. last week off because mm -hmm. I think we just needed a little bit of a break. We had such a crazy month last month. We were behind on so much. So thank you all for being patient with us taking last week off. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And welcome to May, guys. Welcome to May. Happy May. And speaking of breaks, just we just want to get it out there. Like <laughs> First and foremost, we're taking the month of June off. Yep. So I know, I know. It's disappointing, but we this is the first extended break that we'll have had since, I think, July of 2022, so we needed a little bit of a break. Yeah, it's self-care, um, so we'll just be lounging around, not podcasting for June, <laughs> Yes, but then well, we will be back in July, and July is going to be a themed month of episodes because you all shared on Instagram that you like themed months. Yes. And we're going to have our patrons and our Patreon pick the theme for July. Yeah. So stay tuned for that, guys. And some pretty big things happening, I think, in June as well while we're gearing up for our return in July. Mm -hmm. We'll share all of that with you as soon as we can. Yes, exactly. We'll just keep you waiting and wanting more. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had a TV show recommendation for the weirdos, right? I did. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to bring to your attention Fallout. Yes. You know, it was, it's, it's not really history themed. It takes place in an alternative universe in the future. So not history at all, but really liked it. I never really played too many of the video games, actually funny enough. Um, but I really liked the Fallout series, and I do like the lore behind it. It's just so quirky. It's like retro futuristic. Yes. I think the whole basis is in like their point of divergence was in like I think the the mid to late forties, so right after World War II, when we invented the transistor, which made like computers and things like screens like the ability to get smaller and smaller mm -hmm. they never did that so mm -hmm. they kind of had like a retro futuristic future where like, like trajection yeah exactly where you know atomic energy was more was more used very like 50s like 50s vibe but in the future anyway yes. and then fallout takes place like in the post-apocalyptic world yes so it is it's funky it's weird i love it it isn't history but i do feel like having a decent knowledge of recent American history puts the show into context. Absolutely. And I wasn't going to watch it with Andrew because it just didn't seem fun, to be honest. And I was like, oh, the apocalypse, too real. Too much. Um, but it was really good. It, it was. It can be kind of gruesome. So fair warning if you don't like gruesome stuff. But otherwise, it's it's funny. It's fun. It's smart. Yeah. And it you know what's weird is there's a lot of... I think parallels between our universe and theirs, like mm -hmm. kind of like corporatism getting more and more power and how that like detriments just kind of like everyday citizens. That's something that was really present with them. Yeah. Very interesting commentary. So yeah. we recommend fallout. Exactly. We Check it fallout. out. Let us know if you like it as much as we did. Yes. And one more announcement. Should, I'll let you do it. I'll okay. let you do it. Right. We got a puppy. We got a puppy, guys, and I love him so much. <laughs> He's my we baby got, boy. We got a puppy three months ago now. Yes. And his name is? Pericles. Why is his name Pericles? Because he wouldn't <laughs> shut the hell up when we first got him, and mm -hmm. Pericles was this amazing Greek orator from the city of Athens mm -hmm. and was kind of their leader at the beginning part of the Peloponnesian War. So we wanted to name him after like a great... Uh, historical person who believed in democracy. Yeah. So that's our puppy's name, <laughs> Pericles. Par yeah, I'd say it's original. Uh, most people do not like the name Pericles, so he goes by Perry for short. Yeah. You can definitely call him Perry, P-E-R-I. Exactly. Um, we know there's a Perry listener as well, but <laughs> yes. she is P-E-R-R-Y. It's different. Yeah, different. Um, and we... We took our time sharing this news, you know, the three months in the little puppy bubble, because some of you may remember our our old dog, Stella. She's in the logo of the podcast, if you haven't noticed that. She hasn't been with us now for like a year and a half. Yeah. And it was a really, really hard loss for us. So we just didn't want to talk about it, to be honest. Yeah. We wanted to give ourselves time and grieve and be sad. Um, and now that we are you know, in a better place, I guess. And we have this exciting news we wanted to share with you all. 
Yeah. So that's our little family update for you weirdos. Yes. We'll be posting so many pictures of Perry now. Yeah, we've been really tight-lipped about it for a very long time, but you will see a lot more Pericles in months to come. Perry videos, Perry pictures, Perry merch maybe. Yeah, and for (laughs) that's a really good idea actually. That's like on the fly, wasn't it? Yeah. (laughs) So also for our Patreon members, you will see a lot of Perry as well. Oh, yeah. So whether you want to or not, you're getting a lot of puppy content. (laughs) (laughs) We've been building it up. Yes, and we're taking him to the beach for the first time in very shortly. And I'm so Mm -hmm. excited about that. Yeah. I feel like such a dad. We do. We This is our first time having a puppy. We had Stella as an adult dog. Um, So this is our first time having a puppy. And it definitely makes us feel like mom and dad. Yeah, it does. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so that was a lot for you, weirdos. Thank you for bearing with us, but I hope you guys enjoyed kind of our ramblings and the news about the show and the news about our family. Yeah. Kind of a lot, actually. A lot of stuff to update them on. Yeah. So, Steph, I think let's let's keep them waiting no more. Yes. And let's get into the episode. What do you have for us this week? Today, we're going to discuss the mystery of the Mary Celeste. Oh, snap. Okay, let's hear it. So on December 5th, 1872, a British brig called De Gratia was traveling about 400 miles east of the Azores. By the way, a brig is a ship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did know that. Did you? You know, I think I did. <laughs> and for those who may not know, may not know the Azores are an archipelago in the mid-Atlantic, and that's actually an autonomous region of Portugal. Oh. Interesting. So suddenly, the crew spots another ship in the distance, but it looks adrift. So not anchored, but kind of aimlessly floating. The captain of the De Gratia, Captain David Morehouse, is taken aback because he recognizes the ship. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's the Mary Celeste, which had left New York eight days before him and his crew. Oh, wow. So they caught up to it. A ship that had an eight-day head start, basically. Yes. Oh, that's not good. And it'll I'll bring it up again later, but the Mary Celeste, the type of ship that it is, is faster than the De Gratia on top of that. Oh, no, that's really bad. So it should have already arrived at its destination of Genoa, Italy. <sighs> not good. That's not good at all. Captain Morehouse sends some of his men over to go check things out and what they find is one of history's greatest mysteries the entire crew of the mary celeste had vanished okay when you say vanished like there isn't a single person dead or alive on board yeah not a single living soul or even a body or even a body that's insane Mm -hmm. oh it's like a true ghost ship then yeah it's like it's actually a ghost ship in like different ways. Whoa, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Oliver DeVoe is the chief mate of the De Gratia, and he's the one that gets sent onto the Mary Celeste to check mm-hmm. things out, right? So we know from his account what he found exactly. I'm going to tell you. I literally think there's a horror movie called Ghost Ship from like 20 years ago that is this exact scenario. Oh, I'm, I wasn't familiar with that. Yeah, Carl Urban. I vaguely remember this. He's one of the actors. I vaguely remember this from like childhood. And I just remember being scared from the commercials because it looks scary. Did you ever see it? I'm sure I did not. And now I'm sure if I saw it, I'd probably be like, wow, this is corny. (laughs) Probably. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, some of those movies are genuinely pretty scary. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you what he found on the boat. The first thing he noticed when he gets on the ship is that the sails are tattered and they're out of order. Oh. And then he notices that a portion of the port side railing is missing. Port is left. Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. He then checks the ship's pumps and they're perfectly fine. Okay. But there was about three to four feet of water in the hold of the ship. Wow. Okay. And there's probably should be none. There should be none. Mm Mm-hmm. The cabins are also wet, like damp, and all the windows are covered in either boards or canvas. 
Oh, Mm -hmm. like they're trying to keep the sun out? Or just like weather out. Weather. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the beds had clearly been slept in, but they were unmade. An eerie detail that DeVoe noted was the impression of a two-year-old little girl remained visible on her bed. There oh. was a toddler on the ship. And I'll oh. tell you more about that in a bit. No. Mm-hmm. So everyone's belongings are still there. There looks like there's more than enough food and water to get them to their destination. But nobody is on board, like we said. Not the crew, not Captain Benjamin Briggs, his wife, or his two-year-old daughter. Not even the ship's cat could be found. Okay, this is so weird. Mm-hmm. So the puzzled crew of the De Gratia figured, okay, let's sail the Mary Celeste over to where we're going. So they split up. Okay. Half take their normal boat, the other half take the other one um, to see what what's going to happen here. Right. So the they're tugging. The De Gratia is tugging the Mary Celeste. They're not tugging it. The first mate and two other guys are um, commanding it. Oh, they're actually operating it. They're operating it. Oh, oh my God. Because it's in perfect operating condition. Okay, that's... Oh, Mm -hmm. that's... I didn't even... I just assumed that the the engine had malfunctioned or something. No, there's nothing wrong with it. That is so weird. What the heck? Right? Yeah. So they're like, I guess let's divide and conquer. You drive this boat, I'll drive this boat. (laughs) That sounds like fun. Yeah. But eerie under the circumstance. Yes. So they arrive and a court is assigned to investigate what happened. The initial inspection of the ship does confirm that it's in near perfect condition. And the big question is, so then why has it been apparently abandoned? What happened to the people on board? And what's interesting is about this time, it wasn't uncommon for ships to go missing, sadly, if in like a storm. Right. And, and to they, just never be seen. They're probably sunk. Mm-hmm. But it's very uncommon for a ship to stay and for its crew to be gone. Right. It's not even like the engine ran out and like everyone is like left the ship for some reason. Like the engine is working. Mm-hmm. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it's the 18... 18- uh hundreds yeah do they have engines yeah late this is the late 19th century yeah they have engines oh interesting because that's what i i think the pumps i think that's what helps the boat the ship go i wonder if that was like a hindrance then no i said earlier he checked and they were fine oh i have no idea Mm -hmm. no idea it is weird though that the sails are tattered because like you could use both like Mm -hmm. sail power and engine power okay um so I don't know. That's, again, must be a detail that's important, I'm guessing. I guess you'll see. I guess we'll see, yeah. Very quickly, this ghostly ship becomes a worldwide sensation. All the papers start writing about it because the case is just so bizarre. So now we're going to go into the backstory of the Mary Celeste because this ship has quite an interesting history. Okay, let's hear it. So the ship was built in 1861. At Spencer's Island, Nova Scotia, Canada. And it was actually named the Amazon at that point. It was launched on May 18th, 1861. And after that, it had many mishaps. Oh, snap. Okay. During the maiden voyage, its captain was a man named Robert McClellan. Uh, newlywed he was really excited to be in charge of the amazon and he was supposed to sail it from spencer's island to a nearby town Mm -hmm. called five islands by the way both of these towns spencer's island and five islands are not islands isn't that funny what are they then they're towns that are named after islands <laughs> that's so weird isn't that so weird <laughs> yeah it's just a random thing i found in the research and i was like how odd you're like okay so then at five islands the ship was going to be loaded up with lumber and then it was going to head to london gotcha so this is going to be a big exciting journey captain mcclellan hadn't been feeling great But he believed, as many did at the time, that the sea air would make him feel better. Right. 
But before the Amazon even clears the bay, Captain McClellan comes down with pneumonia. Oh, no. So the first mate turned the ship around, and McClellan was brought to shore to recover at the home of the ship's owner, Jacob Spicer. Spicer. Sadly, the young captain dies in Spicer's home. Oh, wow. That was surprising. They load his body back onto the ship because they need to take him home to his new wife. Oh, that's horrible. So the first thing the Amazon ever delivered, the Amazon soon to be Mary Celeste ever delivered, was the body of its first captain, bringing it home to a widow. Like who captained it not even outside the bay, it sounded like. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's safe to say that the life of this ship started off on a really tragic note. I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. After this, the ship was also damaged on several occasions, most notably October of 1867 when it ran aground in Cow Bay, Cape Breton Island. And aground, I had to look this up, (laughs) means when a ship touches the bottom in a shallow body of water and it gets stuck. Yes. So it gets stuck and it gets a lot of damage. Then the next year, the Amazon is sent to New York. Okay. So it leaves Canada. It's sent to New York because no one wants this boat (laughs) that keeps breaking down and having bad things happen. And it gets sold to an American named Richard Haynes, who renames it Mary Celeste. Okay. Why he chose this name is unknown. So Haynes sailed as captain himself of the Mary Celeste. But he wasn't very successful, and he fell deeper and deeper into debt trying to maintain the ship. Oh, so the ship just had a ton of things that needed to be repaired? Yes, and yes. Yes, and yeah, (laughs) fair enough. Like, he's not making money is what I was thinking of. He's not getting his return on investment. Gotcha, so his trips aren't profitable. Yes, that's the word that I couldn't think of. (laughs) No worries. Um, So finally... The ship gets seized for share of sale, which is like a foreclosure sale. Oh. Less than one year after Haynes bought it. Oh, my God. So this really did not work out for Haynes. Mm-hmm. So then James Winchester, a former sea captain, purchases the Mary Celeste. Funny enough, Winchester was also from Nova Scotia, like the ship. Interesting. Unfortunately for Winchester, he found that the Mary Celeste was rotting in some parts and needed almost a complete rebuild, which would cost $11,500. That's almost $400,000 today. Wow. It's so quite significant. A big chunk of change right there. Yeah. It's kind of like Theseus' ship, which we discussed in a past episode. You yeah. change the ship so much, is it even still the same ship? That could definitely apply to this one. It goes under so many repairs over its life. Yeah. So since this makeover is so expensive, he sells a third of it to a Massachusetts captain named Benjamin Spooner Briggs. Interesting. Okay. Isn't Spooner an interesting name? Spooner Briggs. Like that person was born to be a sea captain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it just sounds like... You're right. Like, he came out of the womb wearing one of those captain hats. And he had a full beard and a little pipe. Exactly. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and he just went, I am to eat. His first words. So Briggs owns a third of the ship, and then he becomes its commander. So Briggs's first voyage as the Mary Celeste's commander would take him from New York through the Strait of Gibraltar okay, and into Genoa, Italy. And just... So, you know, before this journey is set to happen, Briggs is the sixth captain this boat has had in 11 years. Okay. So you're not, they're on average, not even lasting two years. No, the captains have not been lucky so far. The first one died. I'd say that's very unlucky. Mm -hmm. So the Mary Celeste begins its fateful voyage on November 7th, 1872, sailing with seven crewmen at Captain Benjamin Briggs his wife, Sarah Elizabeth Briggs, and the couple's two-year-old daughter, Sophia. Oh, no. And I want just a note here. The Briggs family, um, they have another child 
they have a son named Arthur and he's eight, but he's not on this trip with them because he has school. So he stays with his grandparents. Wow. Lucky for him. Lastly, the ship carried more than 1,700 barrels of alcohol. Oh, wow. That's a lot of booze. Destined for Genoa, Italy. The barrels are laid on their sides. This is going to be important later. With pieces of wood wedged in between them so they don't roll around too much. Right. Alcohol can be dangerous cargo to transport because if it's not properly stored and vented, fumes can build up and there could be an explosion. Right. So the ship's first mate was a man from Maine named Albert Richardson. And the second mate was Andrew Gilling from New York. Oh. Another Andrew. Another Andrew. Maybe it's you in a past life. Oh, boy. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. (laughs) So most of the sailors on the voyage are actually Prussian. And they have tons of experience. And then lastly, there was a cat on the ship. Man, son of a nutcracker. Which is pretty common for ships because they keep mice away. Right. And we even did an episode... Or half an episode on a kitty. Unsinkable Sam. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the 280 ton brig will battle heavy weather for two weeks before it reaches the Azores. The ship's last log entry is recorded at 5 a.m. on November 24th. Okay. Do you know when they were found again? This is 10 days prior to the discovery of the ship. Oh, wow. Okay. But the ship also had like a chalkboard where they would take notes. Oh, yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, this was important. We'll put it in the logbook. The chalkboard still had the writing on it um, from November 25th. Oh, so, so much later. Day. No, just the next oh, day. Oh, just the next day. Right. So nine days gotcha. prior. So now we're going to get back to the investigation. So the inquiry took... Three months, three months of people basically just looking at the ship up and down and trying to come up with theories. Right. There was no conclusive answer as to why the crew had disappeared or why they might have abandoned the ship. All they had were theories. Okay. So this is time for theories, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Okay. Lay it on me. Let's go. I'm interested. So one theory which gained a lot of momentum and it was even covered in the New York times suggested piracy. I guess that's the most logical Mm -hmm. or like the, the easiest explanation. Yeah. Should say not the most logical, the most, the easiest. Yeah. That the crew and the family and the cat (laughs) were kidnapped by pirates, but this theory has holes in it. Piracy was uncommon in that region because of the British naval presence actually. Yes. And makes sense. There's no signs of a struggle on the ship. You would think maybe they would fight back a little bit or they'd be dragging people off. You'd see something, right? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, and I think this is really important for this theory pirates typically don't leave valuable cargo behind. Oh, that's also true. And they left all the alcohol behind. Right. That would have been worth a lot of money. Mm hmm. So all the alcohol was left behind. Yes. Okay. As well as um, the people's possessions, like their stuff was still was still there. Oh, that's so strange. Yeah, definitely not pirates. It can't be. Right? Yeah, that would make no sense. They would have ransacked the place and... Absolutely. Searched taken for gold. valuables. Yeah, mm-hmm. gold, like jewelry, diamonds, all that stuff. I think they would have just taken the Mary Celeste. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because it was in good working order. Like, mm-hmm. why not? Mm-hmm. And, like, there wasn't GPS at this time, so you can't, like, find that ship. That's true. Another popular theory of the investigation is, what do you think? Aliens. That's a, that's a modern theory. <laughs> I, I don't go into it, but lots of people do speculate. Maybe they were abducted by aliens. I mean, yeah. And that, that okay. those weird disappearances are aliens, <laughs> yeah. you know? So more realistic than aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Like mass paranoia. Mm, That's an interesting one. That's a really interesting one. I didn't come across that. Basically, most of the theories 
have a theme around violence and murder. I see. But you said there's no signs of a struggle. Yes. That's, to me, that's really weird. I agree. A lot of these theories, right, like murder or pirates or like anything like that seems like there should be a struggle. Mm -hmm. Some speculated that Winchester, the guy who owns the majority of the ship, that he had hired the crew to kill Briggs and his family so he could claim the insurance money on his like business partner. But again, there's no signs of a struggle on the ship, no evidence of foul play. And then a similar theory points fingers at the De Gratia crew, the folks oh. that found the ship. Okay. The question is, did they sail to the Azores and wait for the Mary Celeste to come? And then they captured the ship, murdered those on board, and brought the ship back for the salvage money, which was a lot. It was worth a lot. Well, I, I see that, but wasn't the one the Mary Celeste... A, like faster and B, like it, they had an eight day head start. Yes, you're so, absolutely correct. So that doesn't sound likely. Mm hmm. It's very unlikely they could have ambushed them. And then, lastly, in the violence theme, some wondered if the Briggs family were actually in on the scheme. So they weren't murdered, they just wanted to make it look like they had been taken they went along with it with the De Gratia crew. They were like, okay, you guys bring it in, get the salvage money, we'll go off, and then we'll split the funds. But they never show up. Right. Again, and they left their eight-year-old son at home with his grandparents. Yeah, like that doesn't sound likely. It sounds very unlikely. Would they abandon him? Probably not. So despite extensive searches and ports all over the world like people all over the world are looking for these folks the crew members are never found no sign of them like no one on board no one not a single person that is so bizarre mm -hmm. and then here's a random fun fact about this story in 1884 an anonymous author wrote a fictionalized version of this story. And this fictionalized version, to this day, a lot of people think it's the actual story of the Mary Celeste. In this story, the ship is called the Marie Celeste. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he barely changed the name. Yeah. Like he didn't, he's like, hey, like copy my homework, but change it up a little bit so it looks different. Yeah. And so the teacher that. can't tell. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's what he did. Well, in his story, the ship is carrying passengers. So it has the, the family, the crew, the alcohol, and passengers. And one of the passengers goes insane and murders everyone on board. Oh, so that's probably where the, that theory comes from. A lot of people will th mistakenly thought that that's actually what happened. And what's really interesting about this fact is the anonymous author who wrote this story turned out to be Arthur Conan Doyle. Do you know who that is? Yes. Didn't he do Sherlock Holmes? Yep. The creator of Sherlock Holmes. Oh my God. Wow. Isn't that interesting? That is really interesting. When, was this before he did Sherlock Holmes or? I during? believe before. Oh, wow. Mm hmm What a coincidence. I know. What a small world. Wow. So what did happen? Do you have any theories? Before I get into what seems to be the most likely kind of theories. Well, I, I have an oddball theory Yeah, that they went through some sort of like, if there was big storms, they went through some sort of like time anomaly and they Ooh. like got stuck somewhere. Oh my God. Like in that TV show we used to watch the manifest manifest yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like that. Oh my God. That would be so crazy. That's like, I mean, that's not like my serious theory, but that's like my oddball theory. Okay. Anything else? Anything serious? <laughs> no. Okay. I was also researching this and I was like, I don't know. What happened? I have no idea. This doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to share one of the more likely scenarios. Okay. Let's do that. Um, there are a bunch, but this is the one that I liked the most. So during the storm that they were in for two weeks, the 1700 barrels of alcohol would have been rolling around 
and being exposed to atmospheric changes, right? Because they're in a storm and then it's warmer and then it was windy again and cold again. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then in several log entries on the ship's manifest, (gasps) manifest, manifest, it's noted that they can hear every day like rumblings from the cargo hold where the alcohol is. Oh, so they put that in the logbook. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So all of these factors could have led to fumes building up and leaking out of the barrels. These fumes would have caused headaches, dizziness, and could have caused an explosion. It's possible that the captain realized this is what was happening. Mm -hmm. And since they had a break in the weather, he was like, checking things and was like oh my god yeah it's the cargo they it was common apparently to open the cargo hold to ventilate alcohol right that makes a lot of sense but that one hadn't been ventilated for weeks so i imagine when he opened it it was like lots of fumes all of a sudden so he may have been concerned about the fumes particularly with his wife and his two-year-old child on board and The theory is that he may have decided to abandon the ship on a lifeboat for a few hours with everyone on board to wait for the fumes to pass so that no one would get sick and in case there was an explosion. So they would have had to been far away, far enough away that an explosion wouldn't hurt them, right? Right. But perhaps the weather and the seas were more difficult to navigate than they thought. Records, historical records show that there there were strong winds around this time. Oh no, they could have just gotten blown off course. Exactly. I mean, dude, I I wonder if they tied themselves, like they like anchor, like tied themselves to the boat. That would make a lot of sense. That probably would be the protocol, right? To be like, Or the ship, I should say. The boat to the ship. Yeah, the little boat to the ship. But could it have snapped? I guess so. I would have like tied like two or three ropes just to be safe. Well, now we will if we're ever in this situation. I know. I don't think we will, but (laughs) thank God. Yeah, so it's believed that sadly, while waiting for the fumes to pass, they actually became lost at sea. See, that's the most likely scenario. It's the most boring I will say, but it's the most likely. Mm -hmm. I like the alien one still. Of course. Right. And again... um, Because that's tragic too. Yeah. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. And tragically, there's... Again, I'll just say it again. There was never... Like remains never washed up. Nothing like that. Right. So you're in the... I mean, you're in the middle of the ocean though. Mm Mm-hmm. So despite being seen as unlucky, the Mary Celeste remains in service. No, it's still around. No, no. After this, oh, it remained oh. in service. Like people were like, "Yeah, we'll still, we'll still use it." Oh my god! It goes through a few more owners because Winchester doesn't want it. He's, it's so sad, and he's spooked, and he's like, "No." So he sells it, but people keep selling it. Mm-hmm. It goes through a lot of owners until it's acquired by a man named Captain G. C. Parker. In 1885, Parker deliberately sails this ship into a reef near Haiti as a part of a plan to defraud his insurance company. (laughs) That is such a fitting end to this ship. Mm -hmm. The vessel didn't sink like it was supposed to. Oh my God. Are you serious? So the authorities discover what he was trying to do and he is charged with, you know, insurance fraud and they left the Mary Celeste there on the reef because it was damaged and they're like, whatever. So it became a part of the reef essentially and deteriorated. And uh, like its remains are still there. I would or... think so. I don't know if you could tell or if you could see it, but yes. It's been claimed by the reef. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is such, that is so like on brand. Isn't that wild? From the beginning this ship had literally the young newlywed captain die. Like on its maiden voyage. On its like maiden voyage. Before it even leaves the, the the harbor. Yeah. It gets like, it's frequently like stuck in the sand. It goes through 
insurance fraud. And a bunch of people go missing from it. A bunch it. of people go missing from it. And then it when it's supposed to sink, the one thing it's supposed to do is just sink and it doesn't sink. Classic. Absolutely classic. Isn't this the weirdest ship you've ever heard of? Yeah. it's And not in a good way. And not in a good way. No, it's, this ship was like cursed. This research reminded me of another episode that i did and i'm wondering if you can think of it it also involves a vanishing no actually i'm not it's not coming to my mind that's okay the lighthouse keepers the lighthouse keepers of ellen moore Mm -hmm. yes okay no okay now that you mention it no that does yeah i was like i'm getting deja vu here yeah we've done so many episodes yeah that like i've gone through our catalog before Mm -hmm. and I've literally been like, oh my God, I forgot I did that episode. Not like you did that episode. I did that episode. Totally forgot about it. Yes. Especially the earlier ones. Well, how many years has it been now? I mean, we published our first episode all the way back in January of 2020. Oh my God. Before everything. (laughs) Yes. We had no idea. Talk about weird history. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I know. We could almost go through our like COVID episodes and be like, oh Yeah. Mm, I, no. I'm not ready to relive it yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I don't ready. think so either. It's like 2024 and it feels like we're still in 2020. Yeah. Well, weirdos, as unsatisfying as this ending is, whatever happened on the Mary Celeste remains a tragic mystery. I really like your theory, though. I think that sounds like the most plausible mm-hmm. like, like thing that could have happened. Yes, it's not my theory because I don't know enough about (laughs) ships, but it's the theory that I resonated with the most. I was like, oh, this makes sense. Oftentimes, like it's just the most logical uh, explanation is the true explanation. And you know what? The theory of them intentionally disembarking and getting on the boat also would explain the fact that a part of the port railing was missing. They would have taken it off Mm -hmm. to get down. You know speaking of like details one of the things that doesn't really quite make sense to me is why did they cover all the windows then the storm the storm you're right never Mm -hmm. mind the storm would have done that two weeks two weeks in a storm on a ship sounds so awful that sounds terrible yeah Oof. and perhaps that could have tattered the sails a bit i don't know why the sails would be that shredded and in the wrong order though why would they have put them on in the wrong order? It could have been even like one of them had malfunctioned even just as a coincidence. And, mm-hmm. they, had, and they couldn't use that sail or it was defective or damaged something, right? Mm-hmm. And so they had to use another one. It's so sad. And you know what's kind of even more sad? What? I think it's sweet that they took the cat with them if they were trying to avoid the fumes. Yeah. But they didn't want the cat to get exposed either. But they should have just left the cat there. (laughs) Little did they know, right? I know. I just also like, why didn't they just have everyone stand on deck or something? Uh, Unless... Because of the explosion. Like if the the fear of an explosion. Duh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a good time. Not a good time. Wow. No. Thank you so much for the story. This was kind of a bummer. It is a bummer. It was really interesting. I'm sorry. It is a bummer. But it is uh, one of those head scratchers. Yeah, but I really like your, usually when we have one of these, we're kind of, we give our opinions of like what we think it could have happened. But yeah. I think you have, you're, I almost feel like your theory is, I don't know if it's like, we can't ever know 100% if that's the truth, but it sounds like the closest thing to the truth. Oh yeah, I think so too. But I think that's why people keep coming to this story and stories like this or like the lighthouse keepers because of the fact that we will never know. I think that's what drives us crazy as humans, right? Drives me bonkers. That we would never know with 100% certainty. Mm, that pisses me off. I'm not going to lie. I know. <laughs> and let me share my sources for yes. this week. I watched a video on YouTube. Really good. It's very long. It's like almost a movie um, by a creator called The Part-Time Explorer. Oh, wow. He does a really good job. He goes into like the history of... The island in Nova Scotia and the history of like every person in this story. Like he does deep, deep, deep dives. It's a deep, deep dive. If you're interested in that, the video is called Ghost Ship Mary Celeste, the 150 year mystery. I also reference the Smithsonian Magazine, Encyclopedia Britannica, Mental Floss, 
and Wikipedia. Of course, Wikipedia. Of course. What would be like our world without Wikipedia? I don't even want to know. I, I could never live in such a world. It's basically fallout. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> fallout. Well, weirdos, thank you so much for joining us for another episode this week. Guys, you know what to do. If you haven't already, go to Instagram, follow us. Yeah. And also follow us on whichever streaming service that you use to listen to this episode, whether that be Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever else. Give us a follow if you want. You could like rate yeah like give us those five stars on that will really help us grow and help spread the pod to other people to enjoy other weirdos we need more weirdos yeah i just want to convert all everyone to weirdos exactly you know no more norm core it's only weirdo core from now on (laughs) well okay weirdos until next time (laughs) until next time weirdos adios